Hi, this video is going to give you a few different, a uh, few additional examples to help you figure out how you can find horizontal asymptotes using limits. So, if we recall before, the steps for finding horizontal asymptotes step one, find highest value of x, or find the highest exponent of x. Step two, uh, divide all terms by that value. Step three, uh, evaluate the limits. As x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. So let's go ahead and just get to it. We'll go straight into an example. First example we could do is f of x is equal to uh, 3x squared minus 10x plus 4 divided by 2x minus 7. So let's go ahead and do this. So step one, find the highest exponent of x. Whoops, forgot that there. So the highest exponent of x right there is 2. There is no value higher than x squared. Step 2, divide every term by this value. So we could say f of x is equal to 3x squared over x squared minus 10x over x squared plus 4 over x squared, all divided by 2x over x squared minus 7 over x squared. If we remember how to reduce this, we simply subtract the exponents. So uh, for this first one, this is just going to become 3 because x squared divided by x squared is just 1. Second one here, if I do x divided by x squared, that's going to be um, x to the first over x squared. You subtract the exponents, that's x to the negative 1 and that negative one just goes into the bottom. So this would become, uh, sorry, that should have been a 10. So all these three should be 10s, very sorry about that. So this term should be 10 over x, and then plus four over x squared. Divided by, uh, same process, this would be two over x minus seven over x squared. All right, so we've now divided all the terms by that value. And now what we need to do is evaluate the limits. So any one of these terms here where you have an x in the denominator, I'm going to encircle all of these, essentially approaches 0 as x gets larger and larger. Uh, refer back to the last video if you don't fully understand why. But essentially as you divide by a bigger and bigger number, your value becomes smaller and smaller. So the limit as x approaches 0 is going to equal... 3 minus every term becomes 0, except for the one that doesn't have the x on the bottom. So what this becomes is 3 over 0. Well, we know 3 divided by 0 is equal to infinity. So what we say then is uh, the asymptote approaches infinity. Uh, the limit is kind of going on forever. And um, because we, uh, we have this, th th this is how we know we have a slant asymptote. When the limit approaches infinity, uh, it means we have a slant asymptote, which we'll, we'll describe in greater depth in a later video. Let's try another example. So maybe we have uh, f of x equals x minus 4 over 6x squared plus 8x minus 7. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, walk you through this one as much as I did the last one because hopefully uh, you you can do this uh, and just kind of follow along. So identify the highest term of x that's x squared, dividing every term by that. X over x squared minus four over x squared over six x squared over x squared plus eight x over x squared minus seven over x squared. Uh, looking at the top, any term where the larger exponent of x is in the bottom is going to approach 0. So this is going to become 0 minus 0 over 6 plus 0 minus 0 as you evaluate that limit. 
uh, we can see that this becomes 0 divided by 6, which is simply 0. So we would say in this case our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So what that will look like graphically is just a dotted line along the x-axis and as your graph approaches it, it's going to get closer and closer to that value but never really cross it on either side. Typically looks something like that. Okay, so uh, that's not necessarily the graph for that function, that is just an example of what a horizontal asymptote looks like and what the graph looks like around it. Hope you found that helpful.